So, I came up with my own idea this time. We need a collection of videos, the wokest stuff that's been said in the sports world. This is volume one. Leave a comment, hit the likes, roll the clips. Can we retire using Mount Rushmore? That should be offensive to all of us, especially Native Americans, the indigenous people, who were the first people here before Christopher Columbus. That land was stolen from them when it was discovered that it contained gold. And 25 years later, to add insult to injury, four American presidents were put on what we call Mount Rushmore on the top of the dead bodies that is buried right underneath. So I call for you and for myself, I'm owning this too. Let's stop using the term Mount Rushmore. When we talking about our favorite rappers, talking about our favorite movies, we talking about our favorite players. I know you're gonna see this video and I know you're gonna take action. Could we retire the myth that Jalen Rose has any intelligence. Can, can we retire that myth? I know you're gonna see this video and you're gonna think Jalen's probably high as a kite when he's talking about retiring Mount Rushmore. And that may be true. But also that video, Jalen Rush sitting on the beach, probably high as a kite, talking about, let's quit talking about the Mount Rushmore of sports. That's proof that Jalen Rose is one of the dumbest athletes of all time. So let's retire the myth that he has any brain cells left. What's next? Really disappointed when I initially heard Drew Brees' comments. And part of the reason was, obviously, I look at when someone brings up the American flag and disrespect to our country as it pertains to Colin Kaepernick's kneeling as a dog whistle. I think that's you basically saying that you want to ignore the racial injustice. You want to ignore everything that he's already told you that he's been kneeling for. You want to ignore a peaceful protest and the actual reason why it is taking place. I wonder to myself, after watching that apology on Instagram, would Drew Brees do this if there was no backlash? And you just heard Max Kellerman already say that he's had similar comments before. So my next question is, did your heart actually change? Because racism is a heart problem, and you have to have your heart in the right place. That Maria Taylor clip should have started with beep, 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 as she backed her Brinks truck over top of Drew Brees in her contract push with ESPN. You guys remember this. Drew Brees had the temerity to say, look, I, I don't like it when people disrespect the national anthem or disrespect the flag. It's important to me. He talked about his family. And then Maria Taylor, she's in this contract push. She wants to be paid more than Stephen A. Smith. And so she's got to prove she's one of the wokest people at ESPN and one of the most outspoken, profound voices in all of sports. And she just backed the truck over Drew Brees' reputation all in a contract push so she could get more money. I don't know if you can get more woke than Maria Taylor was when she was desperate uh, with ESPN to get even more money on her contract, uh, but she put the G in grifting. Next. We are still black in this country. We don't trust this country in terms of meritocracy always. We know the bottom line is, is that just like women are underpaid compared to male counterparts, Blacks are underpaid compared to white counterparts. And so when you look at it from that perspective, and of course, I have people look at me. I'm not talking about me, even though I got news for you. I am underpaid compared to some people on television and what they get paid. But that's a subject for another day. I ain't apologizing for that to a damn. So I am underpaid. Having said all of that, it ain't about me. <laughs> <laughs> this is the epitome of woke grifting. No different than Maria Taylor. That is Stephen A. Smith. Now, he's already got his contract, and he's making $10, $12, 13000000 million a year at ESPN. But all of this social justice warrioring, all of it always has to do with whoever's mouth is running and how much money they feel like they're owed. 
or are entitled to. Stephen A. Smith underpaid for talking unintelligently about sports? Are you kidding me? At 10, 12, 13 million dollars a year? It's always about the money. It's never about justice. Next. The theme from the National Hockey League is hockey is for everyone, okay? The theme is not hockey is for everyone, dot, 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 unless you don't believe in gay rights, then do whatever you want. If the National Hockey League is going to do this, if any league is going to do this, do it properly or reevaluate what you're doing. Because there's not a lot of repercussions that I'm seeing from any league. Now, it could change with the NHL. Could change with the NHL. I think you find the Flyers a million dollars for this. I'm not kidding. Figure this out and stop offending people on nights where it's not about that. It's supposed to be about inclusivity. The National Hockey League need to attack this and figure this out. Because what I heard last night was offensive and didn't make any sense. Because, for instance, if that was a military night, okay? Right. If anyone in Canada or in the States on a military appreciation night wouldn't wear a jersey pregame, do you have any idea the uproar that would have happened on that? Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea the backlash? Do you have any idea what happened on social media? It's, it's, it's ridiculous what would well, happen. It was just a minute ago we were talking about the uproar that was happening with FIFA fever, where it's, if you were seen with so much as yeah. a rainbow anywhere, you had to fear for your life, imprisonment, or death. Yeah. Seriously. So, and now here we are. I, I just think the NHL has to do something here. This is not good enough. This is not good enough. Hockey is for everyone, dot, 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 unless, unless you don't agree with gay rights is not the phrasing of this. Respect for the military, people that sacrifice their lives to defend your country, to compare that to a sexual preference, to whether or not you like to bend over and take it up the rear, to whether or not you like to scissor or not. Somehow, respect for the military and respect for someone's sexual preference are equal? That kind of stupidity only in Canada. Next. How can you got to be really low to take from the poorest of the poor? To, Brad, you ain't got enough money? Okay, Skip, listen. You don't, okay, you know you're not supposed to have this. But how about I go give the damn speeches? Mm -hmm. They're paying you to give speeches and you didn't even give the speeches. And now you won't even pay the money back. And they fired one of the guys that, that, that say he tried to recoup the money. They fired him to about when he was a Clinton appointee. Mm -hmm. it, it was political. Yep. Shouldn't you get the money back have nothing to do with politics? The man got the, and this is what we know. Skill when black and brown people do do fraud the government, they do it. They hell bent. Mm -hmm. You get an EBT card and you get wick and you get stuff like that, boy, they move heaven and earth to try to put you in jail for 400 little measly dollars. Fact. Now this man done took a million dollars. Somebody got three million. Somebody got 400,000. <laughs> yeah. And they sitting around like, well, well, you know, it, it happened and we'll see. And they're going to get more money and do it all over again. <laughs> Fact. I love Skip Bayless. Fact. Preach. Fact. I don't know if it gets any woker. This may be the wokest, and you guys know how I feel about Colin Kaepernick. You, you guys know how I feel about a number of these issues. But is anything bigger and woker than, what about Brett Favre? And Shannon Sharp is the champion of what about Brett Favre. I've said it before, it's like, OJ Simpson, if he were on trial right now for double murder, Johnny Cochran would have been, his closing argument would have been, what about Brett Favre? And Shannon Sharp would have been preaching that message on Undisputed. And Skip Bayless would have been in the background, preach that. Mm-hmm. Say it again. Amen. Fact. Next. Pride is about inclusion, so you don't love them and you don't welcome them if you're not willing to wear the patch. And calling it a lifestyle reveals to me that you've done not even a modicum of research or understanding on this topic. It's what tends to happen when a privileged class isn't affected by things. This is not just about baseball. That religious exemption BS, which is used in sport and otherwise, also allows for people to be denied health care, jobs, apartments, children, 
prescriptions, all sorts of rights. And so we have to stop tiptoeing around it because we're trying to protect people who are trying to be bigoted from asking for them to be exempt from it when the very people that they are bigoted against are suffering the consequences. When you say trying to be bigoted. They're trying to use religious exemptions to affect the opportunities, services, uh, available resources for people who are LGBTQ+. And a patch on the jersey in, in this way? In the case of sport, no. In the case of sport, though, they're double talking if they're saying you're welcome while also saying that we don't encourage or, or we disagree with it, especially when there are devout people of every single religion that also welcome and are open to people who are born gay. David. Yeah. So when your argument is so stupid that Tony Reale has to correct you in real time and has to point out the stupidity, hold on. By not wanting to wear a patch, they're denying people health care and children and being disrespect and just using religion. He's like, really, a patch? And she, she had to back up, and try, but oh my God, when Tony Reale's calling you out in real time, Sarah Spain, man, you have really, really pushed the woke envelope. Hats off to Tony Reale for calling her out. Uh, next. Tell you from my personal experience, anecdotally, when I go to Native American reservations around the country to call fights, I am approached. I've, I've received feathers in honor and letters saying thank you for your stance publicly. This is the way many of us feel. So the Washington Post, do I believe that's a representative survey of the way Native Americans actually feel about this? No, I do not. But how hard is it for you or anyone to empathize, simply empathize with a group who is defended, even if it is a what? minority of the group that is offended? And as to the argument, kind of when is enough or when does it end? My friend Brian Kenny, Stephen A., our colleague and, and good friend from ESPN, now on MLB Network was tweeting about this last night and someone asked him about what about the fighting Irish? Brian is Irish American. His father, Charlie Kenny, the late great Charlie Kenny, bog farmer from Ireland. That's where his people are from. Walked the beat in Queens as a cop once he got to this country. Was asked about the fighting Irish and the leprechaun logo. And many Irish Americans are not offended, but many are. And should that also change? You answer The that. answer is, the answer is Yes, oh well, unequivocally yes. Pernicious negative stereotypes of marginalized people that offend even some among them should be changed. It's well, not that hard. I know Max Kellerman. He's one of the wokest people on the planet. I used to kind of think Max was smart and well-intentioned. I'm not so sure. You know, Max grew up a rapper. A pretty decent rapper. New York's a state, my city's in. I'm in who I hate. I pity him like a branch to Vivian. Got skills, got stamina. Got hands of stone like the champ from Panama. So I would love for Max to get on his woke soapbox and talk about rap music and how it denigrates. What was his word? Pernicious? How it denigrates black people over and over and over and over again. But the Notre Dame fighting Irish, we need to eliminate that. But rap, nah, let's don't touch that. Max, brother, could you speak on that? I would, I, 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 let's hear you talk about that. You're a former rapper, you know rap as well as anybody on the planet. Talk about that. I doubt he'll do that. Max. I don't know why they don't consider it a crime, but either way, it's still hate. And yes, it probably wasn't there specifically for Bubba Wallace because allegedly we didn't know what garage he was going to be in, but it doesn't make it better that it's been there for a year, but then they try to spin it as, oh, this is just how they tied the knot as they pulled down the garage. And so clearly other people have seen it over that period of time. And it doesn't make it even better that it was 2019 or 1959 for anybody to have to show up to work and see a noose readily available. Oh, my God. 
Jalen really does want to be the woke king. I mean, he really does. This man, this is him talking about Bubba Wallace after it was proven beyond a reasonable doubt that that noose had nothing to do with Bubba Wallace. And it wasn't a noose. It was a garage door, pull, rope, whatever, tied in a knot so people could pull it down. No one's looking at that and going, oh, my God, when I see a rope hanging on a garage door, I immediately think about all the lynching that went on with black people 70 years ago. This is all a game they're playing. It's a joke. Do you? Stop them with this. Just just the next time you hear one of these people talk about a news or whatever, you know, there were far more white people hung and lynched than black people. Look, at this is a fact. It was commonplace for people to get lynched. You, you horse wrangling or stealing a horse or rustling or whatever they call it. You steal someone's cow or whatever. They hung you. It was commonplace. The people that killed Abraham Lincoln, all of them that was involved in that, got lynched and hung. This whole thing that a, a, a hanging noose is specific to black people is a joke. It's a burden we put on ourselves. Jalen Rose, go smoke some weed and shut up. So uh, that's volume one of the wokest takes in sports. We got even more. Hit the likes, hit the comments, and go hunt down volume two, because it's just as good. Like what you saw? Hit that like button, subscribe, and check out the full episode by clicking the link below.